Thanks for tuning in to a little how-to video on drag racing. Uh, this video is kind of geared towards those of you who've never visited a track before. You're kind of nervous about it, nervous about how you uh, start it, how you do the burnout, um, you know, the, the Christmas tree and all that stuff. Um, 1A Auto, we don't condone street racing in any way, shape, or form. Uh, if you do feel a need to get this, get your speed out, then usually a closed course or drag strip is the safest place, but even under the safest conditions, drag racing is still a dangerous sport. We're going to look at some of the basics of drag racing. We're going to look at staging, um, which is just how you line up your vehicle uh, prior to the race, some of the basics of that. Um, we'll look at the burnout box, which is basically preparing your tires or preparing your traction tires, the tires that, um, the, the drive tires that provide you the forward force. Uh, then staging, all about the starting line, and then leaving on the green. And I um, emphasize leaving on green, not leaving when the light's green. Um, basically, if you see a green light, you are leaving too late. Okay, so the first part is the staging lanes. Okay, this is just where your car is lined up and ready to race. At this point, um, you should have all the safety equipment that the track says you need, um, and your car should be ready to go. You can make final adjustments like take air pressure out of your tires uh, for better traction and things like that. Um, I am not going to go over all the um, stuff that you need before this. I will say that if you're just interested in drag racing and you go up for a street night to your local track, um, you will have to pay, uh, pass a tech inspection. And generally, as long as your car is registered and inspected, um, you will, generally, you'll be able to pass a tech inspection. Um, the only usual exception is uh, maybe an extra return spring on your throttle cable and a um, bottle that collects your radiator uh, overflow on older cars. They didn't always have those. You'll have to install some type of uh, container to catch your radiator overflow. Okay, but at this point, this is the staging lanes. Uh, we're ready to race. The next step will be to pull forward into the burnout area. Okay, here's a shot of a beautiful 70 GTO Judge. Um, getting ready to go into the burnout area. Now you can see about 20 feet in front of the vehicle there is water. It's the, the concrete is wet um, and as we watch you'll see the car pulls through that area, pulls to the front of it a little bit and then spins his tires um, and produces a lot of smoke. This is called doing a burnout. Okay, now the purpose of that is basically on a race car you run what's called either slicks or drag radials um, and those tires need to be cleaned off because they basically have no, they have no tread on them. Uh, so you do the burnout, that cleans them off and then that heats them up because the hotter they are, you know, usually the better traction they provide. Now if that was a little, that can be a little intimidating, um, but on your first try out there you do not have to do a burnout like that. You can go around the box as I'm going to show you uh, in this next clip. So you saw the Firebird there, went around the water through the dry area, kept the tires dry, and then approached the starting line carefully. This is probably what you're going to want to do on your first time out. Um, you don't want to drive street th tires through the water box because generally what you'll do is pick up water and carry it forward with you to the starting line, which is going to create traction problems for you uh, the next time or when you try and start the, or launch the car. Okay, so you've finished your burnout, or you haven't done a burnout, and now you're going to approach the starting line. The first thing to notice as you approach the starting line is this gentleman. He'll be standing in the middle of the track. Okay, this is the starter. And obviously, if you're in the left lane, he's going to be in the middle to your right. And if you're in the right lane, he's going to be in the middle to your left. Uh, this guy's going to help you out. Generally, these guys are very good. Um, they recognize cars, and they also recognize when people are somewhat new to the sport and um, kind of give you a helping hand. They're going to tell you 
um, whether there is a problem on the track and you need to sit still for a minute um, or if they do nothing they're going to just kind of expect that you're going to slowly inch forward and where are you inching forward to okay the next part is the starting line itself and this is kind of the hardest thing for people to understand because you actually can't see a starting line on the track here I've put two red lines across the track these represent the staging beams uh, on all tracks there's usually lasers that go across and to put your car on the starting line you basically need your wheels um, to interrupt those lasers and then when your wheels interrupt the lasers you will look towards the Christmas tree that you can see here. The Christmas tree has um, a few sets of lights on it. As your wheels break the staging lane or the starting line beams, you'll see um, lights on the top light up. So let's watch uh, the clip of this race car. Okay, and as you saw, the car inched forward and lit the top set of lights. If you look at the top of the Christmas tree, you'll see two small bulbs on. Okay, these are the pre-stage lights. Um, you Basically, this means that you are approaching the starting line, and you can stop here and kind of get yourself ready. Take a few seconds before you proceed forward again. The car inched further forward, and as you can see, if you look at the Christmas tree, again, there's now two sets of lights lit up on top. Uh, this indicates that the car is staged, and you need to be, as a driver, you need to be ready to race at this point. And now we're going to switch cars and see what happens next. Okay, so you notice that three uh, yellow lights counted down. There was basically about a half a second on each light, and then the um, then the green light lit. This is called a full tree. There's two different trees. Um, most likely, this is what you're going to see on a street night. Would be this full tree. Um, there also is a pro tree, which I'll show you very quickly later. Uh, you'll also notice if you watch again um, that the car started. You can notice that it actually starts before uh, the green light goes. Okay, that was another look at the full tree. Next clip you're going to see a pro tree where the three um, yellow lights go off at once and then the green. So here we are back to our white Trans Am and I did talk a little bit about how this car left before the green light and in drag racing especially in bracket racing or elimination runs um, getting the reaction time is one of the most important parts okay and this is also kind of about what the scoreboard shows you when you're watching and on this time trial run you can see the 0.61 that's this car's reaction time this car left the staging beams, okay, the beams reconnected 61 thousandths of a second after the light turned green. So that's a pretty good reaction time. Um, and that's what you're looking for. Now I'm not going to go into too much about how you get those reaction times good. I'm just going to tell you that, again, like I said before, if the light's green, if you see the light go green, then you're probably too late. And after your vehicle crosses the finish line, your time and speed is shown uh, on the board at most tracks. Okay, this car ran the quarter mile in 9.74 seconds um, and finished with a speed of 136.66 miles per hour. Now at this point, this is probably the most dangerous part of the race is after you've finished and you're slowing down. Uh, most tracks have what's called right-of-way. Uh, they designate which lane has the right-of-way, so you, that might be something you want to look up at your track before you race. Uh, the general um, practice is at the end of the race, the slower car uh, slows down faster and then pulls in behind the faster car and then you turn off the track slowly and safely uh, and then proceed to the timing booth and you pick up uh, your time slip which I'll show you okay so here I am 
uh, proceeding down the return road uh, at this track. The little shack is on the left. She's got a little slip there she hands to me. I take it and then proceed down to park carefully. And here you can see my time slip. Okay, the f uh, my vehicle is left lane, number 1738, reaction time. You can see 0 .000, that's actually a perfect reaction time. Uh, and then the 60 foot time, that's how quickly my car went in the 60 foot. Uh, then 330, uh, eighth mile time, and then eighth mile speed. And then 1,000 foot time, and then the quarter mile time, as well as the quarter mile speed. And your goals can be different um, for this. Uh, this is this is kind of the same as you know an Olympic sprinter. Um, they're you know they run the hundred meter in uh, 9.8 seconds or whatever. Um, this shows you how your car runs. Um, your goals could be to make your car quicker and reduce the times or increase the speeds, um, or your your goal could be make sure your car stays consistent, um, which helps to uh, go further in elimination rounds. Um, and you do all these things by different tuning your car differently, um, trying different techniques as a driver, um, and that's where it becomes more and more fun. Okay, hope you enjoyed this little introduction to drag racing. Um, at 1A Auto, we don't condone, condone street racing in any way, shape, or form. Um, Closed track racing is always safer, but even in a closed track there is risk of injury or death. So uh, be careful, be safe, and maybe we'll see you out at a strip someday in the future.